Hi everyone, it's Dawn. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Little Wonders Nature Shorts, where we'll be learning about birds in your backyard. So what kinds of birds do you have living around your neighborhood or your backyard? Well, it's going to depend on what is surrounding you. Do you have woodlands? Do you have a big open uh, mowed lawn? Do you have taller grasses like a meadow? Maybe you even have a pond in your backyard. Here in my yard, we have some woodlands on the edge and a big open backyard. So we have a variety of birds that visit us or that live nearby in our woods. So let's first so focus on songbirds because this time of year in the spring, you're hearing a lot of them. So these are the little birds of different colors, sparrows, cardinals, woodpeckers, morning doves. I have a few here that are not alive anymore that I'm showing you at the moment. This is a little white-throated sparrow. There's many types of sparrows, that's just one. And then these songbirds can range to the bright red cardinal. Now this is a boy, the girls have less red on them. But that's a bird you might be familiar with. There's also the American Robin, of course. But this one is a blue jay, not a blue bird, but a blue jay. So you see all the different colors, the shapes of the beaks in these birds, and the size variations that they have. So with songbirds, a lot of people know their songbirds by sound. You might not always see them, although of course you go looking for them, but you can also listen for them. And you wanna go out early in the morning if you can, maybe up to about 11 a.m. this time of year, you're gonna hear birds calling. And I happen to have a bird caller here I use a lot. It's from For the Birds, Inc. If you want to look it up, it's an identifier. They're really good for helping you learn bird call birds by their calls. We have a lot of woodpeckers in my backyard. <laughs> woodpeckers, woodpeckers make a lot of funny noises. That's a northern flicker. That's a downy woodpecker. And you're not hearing any calls that would, that would um, make them unique in that. I just know those laughs, that those are woodpeckers. But there's some birds we can actually put human words to their calls, like this one. That's a black-capped chickadee. Chickadees say their name. Chickadee dee dee dee. There's also the American Robin. Cheery up, cheerio, cheery up. Can you sing like an American Robin? How about the chickadee? This one's easy to do. That's the morning dove. Not really a song, but kind of a, he sounds very sad. Not an owl, that's a morning dove. The mockingbird can actually talk like a lot of other birds. They copy them. So that one's not really any human words to listen for, but it's a pretty song that they do. And there's many other birds. Um, you can get different cards for that identifier. You can also go online and look up bird songs and listen to them. I have some resources. If you're interested, you can contact me. Um, of course, when you're going out looking for birds, if you want a field guide, if you don't already have them, these are some good ones for kids. You can pick up at your local bookstore. And with songbirds, you might even have found, in springtime, they're of course building nests. Here are two I happen to have. I'm not sure who built them, but obviously smaller birds. I thought they were kind of interesting. They use grasses. This one has even used horsehair and trash from somewhere that it found that people left behind to make their nests. So why do birds build nests? To raise their babies. They lay their eggs in those nests. But you know what? When they're done and their babies have gone, then the birds go back to the trees or wherever they were living before. They don't use those nests year round. Now, if we move off songbirds and go on to some other interesting birds, what are some birds that you would hear here at nighttime? Owls, if you answered owls, you are correct. And many people are familiar with owls, but how do you know you're hearing an owl? They don't all make the same hooting noise. If you hear, that is our hoot owl. That's a great horned owl. And they're around in this area with a lot of them calling. They're in this area uh, with a lot of woodlands, but you might also hear If you hear that strange noise, that's this little bird that you're about to meet. They 
make that eerie sound, um, but they're very common in the woodlands. And I want you to meet a friend of mine who makes that sound. And I'll tell you why I have her. Now this is Scarlet. Scarlet is an Eastern screech owl. Now I have Scarlet among some other birds in my care because they can't be released into the wild. They got injured, um, they're not in any pain, but they do have some things that are noticeable. Scarlet does not have her left eye, so she can only see out of one eye, her right pretty one, if she'll look at you at the camera. And so Scarlet can't survive out in the wild anymore. So I take care of her. She lives in a very large enclosure uh, here in my backyard. She just travels in this. And she goes out and does education programs with me to teach people about owls. So if you see there's Scarlet's eye, you see her nice big pretty eye. So as an owl, Scarlet is really good at hiding. Are you good at hiding? They actually hide in the hollows of trees. So any larger holes in the trees that screech owls can fit in, that's where they make their nests. And they might even live there, they live there year round. So you might even have them uh, near your backyard. Scarlet has very strong feet that she would catch and kill mice with. So here at my house, she's fed already dead mice and she eats them just fine. And the feathers on her heads on her head are just for blending in, for camouflage. They are not her ears. Her ears are right where yours are, only under her feathers. So owls have really good hearing, and they have pretty good eyesight as well. But you see her pretty color. So she blends in with tree bark. So I hope you learned a lot about birds today that you could find in your backyard. I have many more resources if you'd like to contact me. Some at-home activities, parents if you're interested. Um, if you don't have real binoculars, you can pretend. Grab some toilet paper or paper towel rolls and attach them together and make some binoculars. If you look online, you'll be able to find samples. There's also coloring sheets. You could print out a coloring sheet have your and a, a photo of, or photos of different birds. Have your children try to color those birds the way they should really look, help their observation skills. Uh, I have a coloring sheet if you would like to um, contact me for mine or from diff in different resources. And of course, there's many other bird uh, crafts and activity ideas uh, that you can find online or again, contact me at Green Valleys. But thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you next time.